welcome to a new video my friends. In this video we are going to work on the max for life device that we created in the previous tutorial and we are going to expand it in a way that it will create the visuals that you have just seen. So if you wish to get access to the max for live uh, before actually watching the tutorial and uh, watch the tutorial while having the patch in front of you, you can get access to this patch by supporting the channel on my Patreon. Otherwise, you can just follow along with the tutorial and we will create exactly that. So I'm still using the demo song from Ableton and this is the effect as we left it last time. So let's go on and open our device because what we want to do as we saw in the beginning is to have several videos that will be triggered according to our MIDI input. So in this tutorial what we will achieve is that you will uh, be able to load a folder with videos inside the max for life device or just a, a bunch of videos singularly and then the device will randomly select a video according to when we receive a certain note as an input from our MIDI track. So this is what we are going for. Now we will keep the zoom effect intact as it is and we are going to replace the JIT movie with another object which is called JIT GL Poly Movie. Now JIT GL Poly Movie, um, it's like JIT Movie in the sense that it plays videos but with Polymovie, you can load a whole folder of videos inside the object and you can select them using an index. So let's check its help file to see how this actually works. Right, so we can uh, use the message append folder followed by the path to that folder or append movie followed by, uh, by the path to that movie. And then in this way, we can load stuff inside the Polymovie object. And every time we load something, I think it will show us a list of everything that is inside in this U menu object. So for example, I drop a folder with some videos inside it. And here it shows me the actually the, the actual video that I have been loaded inside the object. So this is pretty cool. So let's actually do like this. Let's copy this whole part of the L patch. So with all these objects, I'm just deselecting the three and these other two objects because we don't need them. And then I'm also getting the clear message. Um, I'm shift uh, uh, clicking on those objects in order to include them in my copy. And then um, I think this is going to be it. I'm just gonna copy that, close these, and then I'm going to delete the prepend read uh, object and the JIT movie. And then I'm just going to even the GGL Pony movie we don't need because we have just copied it. Oh, actually, we don't even need this uh, drop file object with this message. Uh, okay, great. So now what we got is the snippet from the help file copied inside our Max for Life device. So a snippet is like a bunch of Max objects. And the cool thing about help file is indeed that you can just copy portion of them, pass them inside your, uh, your patch. So in a very fast way, you can have already a working version of the object with all the messages attached to it. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so we want to connect our GGL Polymovie to our zoomer effect. Uh, this texture version, we don't really care. Play me more at the index, we don't really care about those comments. And let me also put a bit down those objects and these cables then got kind of mixed up. But if I press Ctrl, Shift and uh, Y, it's, uh, it's going to order them in a nice way. So this is another shortcut. Command plus Shift plus Y, it's going to uh, set cable straights, I guess. Cool, so that's a useful shortcut. And great, so let's now try again to just load a bunch of videos inside this object by dropping a folder with some videos inside uh, uh, this drop file object. So this is actually the folder with the videos, just so you have an idea what I'm doing here. And as you can see, the list of all the movies gets output here and we can actually see that. Oh, the sand object we also don't need, so we can get rid of that as well. Cool. So now let's check again the help file of the JIT Poly movie because I want to know how I can play a certain movie. And if you see there is this uh, uh, message box here where there's written play one and there's written play first movie. So I guess that if we send play followed by an index, 
we will be able to play the movie at that index. In fact, if we check the reference for the object and we check the play message, it will tell us that it's written play the movie at index, zero based. Playing an instance makes it active and a recipient to many attributes for playback messages. Okay, cool. So if we want to play the first movie, actually, I guess it should be played zero because you say it's zero based. Um, I don't know why it's written one, but let's try with played zero into our version. So if I send now the message played zero to GGL Polymovie, let's see what happens. And as you can see, it started playing the movie right here. And there is a lot of bloom now going on. Uh, let's actually do that. Okay. Cool. And so I get, and this is the first video in our list. It's called Automatic Chocolate Machine. So if we say play one, it's going to play the second movie, which is I video. Okay, really cool. So now what we can do is that every time we get a note as an input, we select a random movie. So first thing first, uh, we should know how many videos there are in our object, inside a GGL Poly movie object. So how many videos there are in this folder that we just loaded. And there are several ways in which we can do that. For example, we can send the count message to this U menu object. This is called U menu, this object. And uh, you know, we can also make these uh, comments appear like a nice bubble so that they point, point in one direction, a bit like a comic. So this object here is called U menu. And we can send a count message to it. So if we use a message box to see what's coming out, when we send it the count message, we can see that from the rightmost outlet, it's coming the word count followed by the number of items inside the object. As you can see, those are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 elements. So cool. If we use again our friendly object route in order to filter out this word, uh, and I don't remember if we use route already, but uh, this is an object that allows us to kind of filter out the first word in a message so in order that we can just get what is after that word. In this case, it's the number of elements uh, inside the U menu. So exactly. Uh, in this way, we can see that there are now 11 movies inside the object. Cool. Uh, so we now got this as a single number. And what we want to do, as you maybe already guessed, is to use this number for the random object, because the random object we can also set procedurally uh, which maximum random number it should create. So if we give it the number 11, it will create the random numbers between 0 and 10 every time it receives a bang message. This is again the button object, which sends a bang message to objects. So as you can see, if I press it multiple times, it will give us random number between 0 and 10, which is exactly what we need. And then we can use those uh, this number with a play message. So we can say play $1, which means $1 is going to be replaced by the number, as we saw in the previous tutorial. So now every time that I press here, it's going to give us a new video to play, which is pretty awesome because now we have a random uh, playing video machine. Very cool. We just need to connect this now to the to our MIDI input, which we say every time we get the MIDI note at pitch 60, which should be like the C. Uh, this will activate all those effects. We could also actually use another note for that. So let's do it. Let's go in our um, uh, demo song MIDI track. And I'm just going to use the uh, note at C sharp. So 61 this should be. And I just want to change the movie every time there is the bass note. So here is the bass. Uh, here is the bass. So here is where the bass kind of kicks in. So we're going to use this as the trigger for our change of movie. So I'm going to add another number here, cell 61, uh, which is the C sharp. So if I play now the song, we should see that every time the bass kicks in, we get a bang here on the 61. Okay, cool. That's exactly what we want. So we just need to connect this new bang now to our uh, random object here. Cool. And enjoy the show. Actually, uh, first, 
let's actually add those uh, two drop files to our interface. So I just uh, select them and say add to presentation and go into presentation mode and then just add them to our interface. This is the drop file where we can drop a movie folder. And this is the drop file where we can drop a single movie file. Now, I want to have some more stuff on our interface because I want to be able to clear the actual folder if, in case I want to load a new one. So I will add that to the presentation, the clear message. And I would also like to have the U menu containing all the movie files because I want to be able to see what's inside it. So I will add this to the presentation as well. And I'm just going to put it down there. And I'm saving this. So now I will close this object. I will start the demo song and load a folder with the, the videos again. And it seems to be a problem, right? Because it's not changing the video. So let's see what I did wrong. Let's open again the device. Go into work mode, edit mode. Oh, of course, I forgot to send a message count to the object. So what we should do is to send this count message to the U menu every time this object finishes to read the folder that we send it. So in order to see if this object gives us some clue uh, when it re finished to read a folder, we can use the print object to print whatever comes out of that to the console. So now I'm going to drop my folder and we can see what comes out. And there is a bunch of stuff coming out of there. Uh, as you can see, the first uh, messages is like movie list append, append, append without any name. And then there is the name of movie list set item message followed by the index of the movies and the title of the movie, I guess. And then it's written read folder dawn 11. So actually this tells us already uh, how many elements we have inside the folder, but we will nevertheless use our count message. So what we can do is to use the this read folder dawn in order to trigger our count message. So if we root from here read folder, we can then say select dawn. So every time the word dawn comes out of there. So for example, if it, uh, uh, let's check. If it this reads the folder successful, successfully, it will send out uh, dawn plus how many elements that are now in the GGL poly movie object. And as you can see, there are 22 now because it uh, keeps accumulating them. If you load the same folder multiple times, that's why we want to have the clear message. So, uh, we should actually say instead of cell done, we should say root done. And then if it was saying done, uh, we will trigger the word count and send it to our U menu object. Then it will tell us how many objects there are inside. So let's try again uh, by dropping the folder and okay, cool. It We send it and uh, the folder is read. Uh, it sends out this root uh, these read folder messages, we root it and then we root done. It comes out of 22, uh, 11 out of here, and we use this 11 to just trigger the message because it doesn't matter whatever you send to a message, it will anyway trigger it. Or we could just explicitly convert whatever comes out of that with a bang, uh, with a button object into a bang. Um, let me try, just for curiosity, to add a manually a single movie because we can also drop single movie files here. And cool, okay, so we now see that it kept adding this movie to the list. And as we can see, it added it at the end of the list and it also, it sent out a message which in the end we could route to the word done. So we still get the amount of elements inside the U menu object. Pretty cool, nice. So I'm going to save that, I'm going to close it and let's now see if this works. So let's play the song. As you can see, it can also be that this sends out a random number that is actually uh, already happened. So it sends out uh, uh, two consecutive times the same number. And that's maybe not what we want. We could fix that because otherwise it's a bit boring. So let's actually fix that. Let's open again our device. 
exit the presentation mode zoom in and okay so there is another object that gives us random numbers without repetition which is called urn so instead of random we are going to use urn when we open the help file of urn we can see that uh, it just works exactly like random but uh, it will give us random numbers without repetitions for, for for example if i say three it will give us the number zero one and two in random order without any repetitions and once you finish the numbers it will send out a bang from the right outlet outlet to tell us that uh, it uh, doesn't have any more numbers and every time we clear this object it will start again from scratch so we can use the bang that comes out of here to uh, send out a clear message so we can then uh, keep producing random numbers indefinitely cool so let's close that and let's in indeed replace the random number with a urn object so let me load the folder of videos here oh okay i need to first clear it and then load the folder cool and let's give it a try actually let's click this bang button 11 times so we get all the random all the videos in random order and then it gives us a bang so we can then use this bang to send a clear message to the object so then it can start again so let's give it a try and the message clear and let's see which numbers it actually sends out so five eight oh but the problem is if we check the help file uh, which i have modified as slightly to have the print statement the print object here we can see that every time we click for example four times here so we get four random numbers the fifth time that we send it a bang it will not send out a number but it will just tell us that it doesn't have any more numbers inside so that's actually a bit annoying because this uh, latest bang is actually wasted it doesn't produce us any random numbers so what we should do is every time this sends out the bang it should send a clear message followed by a bang because then we get also still another random number so in order to concatenate messages inside a message box we say we can use the comma which basically means send first the clear message then send the bang message these are two separate messages which get sent separately with the comma if we print them in fact for example and show what's coming out of here uh, we can see that it sends out clear and then bank has two separate messages so now we should be good to go if i start clicking here we see that there are no wasted clicks okay awesome so let's actually close the patch uh, start the music Okay, so it works. One thing I just noted is that uh, when we modify the object and so we load a folder, we first, uh, when we want to use the, um, uh, the device, we first need to clear and then load the folder instead of just loading the folder right away after we modify the, uh, the device. Otherwise, there will be like some dummy video still loaded in memory that will uh, not uh, display correctly. So let's see how it looks like. And it seems to work uh, correctly and look pretty cool. That's very nice. Cool, this is going to be it for this video. We introduce a new object which is called GGL Poly Movie and it's really cool. And also we saw some cool tricks with the help files and with the print state object. And so I hope you are getting more and more familiar with how Max works and how we can take advantage of the console and the help files. And cool, thank you very much for following. I said in the beginning you can get the patch from my partner or you can just recreate it by following the video. Anyway, it has been a pleasure and I hope to see you in the next video. Ciao!